Welcome to part three of the Alpha Zero for Connect Four series. In the last part of the series, we went through kind of the basics of how we use the Monte Carlo tree searching process to uh, simulate a move in, or to, to choose a move in a simulated Connect Four game. Uh, so we're going to finish that part of the series up in this video and actually finish writing all the code to get through uh, that one simulated move. So when we, when we run these Monte Carlo simulations, we can run uh, hundreds or, or sometimes even thousands of simulations. I've found that on my machine I can run a few hundred simulations in a reasonable amount of time when training uh, before it starts taking too long. Um, I think in, in practice, in AlphaGo, they were using something like 15 or, or 1600 simulations per move. Um, so in our case here, we're just going to start with, um, we can just start with 10, or actually, I think 100 simulations will be doable. Um, so we just need to iterate here. We can create a variable called uh, num simulations, and this will be like a hyperparameter that you can change throughout your training process to kind of tune and see what works best. But we'll stick with 100 for now. Um, so in range 100 we can start iterating. So the first thing we want to do here is we're just going to rename our root node. So we're going to make a copy of it just called node. And this will be so that we can keep expanding and, uh, and checking various things from this node and overriding it when necessary. So we'll just rename our root to be a node in this case in a separate copy. And then we'll also initialize a variable called search path. So what this is going to be is for now, it's just going to be a list of just the root node. But we're going to keep adding each node that we um, that we traverse to this search path. So if you remember uh, in our theoretical example here, once we reach the bottom of the tree or the end of a simulation, we want to back up the value all the way through all, through all the states that we touched during that simulation. So to do that, we need to keep track of the path that we took. Uh, so that's what that search path variable will be. Uh, we'll just keep a, a running list of that. Um, and then the, the next step here is to just keep expanding our, or to keep choosing our, uh, an action from our expanded nodes until we reach a node that has not been expanded. So from the start, all we have is our, our root node and we've expanded the root in our last video. So currently what we have on the tree is these first, these first three states, um, our root and the two children of that root. Um, and we want to then uh, keep going further down the tree. So we're going to say uh, we want to run a while loop here, and we want to just traverse the tree until we reach a node that is not expanded. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to just count the children of the node, very simply. So uh, while the length of node.children is greater than 0, meaning this node currently has children, uh, meaning it is, it's been expanded already, um, we want to basically select an action. Uh, and this, well, to node.select child. So this will be a function that we have to write yet. But basically, this will, um, the select child function will return an action and the child node. So we're just going to select child from our current node. And we will write that function now. For now, I think we're just going to choose one randomly, just, just for example purposes. There is a, a very specific method defined by uh, in the Alpha Zero uh, paper, and and you can you can find it um, pretty readily available online elsewhere. Um, but basically, it's a function that uses something called a UCB score, uh, and we can get into writing that maybe at the end of this video or, or in a future one. But for now, let's just take in. I think we don't need any arguments here. Let's just pick a random child for now. So from our, how can we do this? Um, self dot children. Actually, for for the purpose of this example, let's just choose a number, uh, random dot choice from the list zero five, because we know our only actions in this example are going to be zero and five. And then once we once we swap this out for the actual function, we can modify this. But let's just say uh, action equals random choice from zero and five. And then our child node that we're selecting is going to be the one indexed by that action. 
So uh, if you recall, our children variable from our attribute from our in our node class is just a dictionary of all the children with the action as the key. So we're just going to call that. Uh, I don't know why I put index there. I meant action. So we're going to put we're going to call that action as the index uh, to index that child, and we're going to return that. So we can then from this select child function return action and child. So from here, um, we're actually going to call this node. So we're going to overwrite what we had previously called node because we want to keep traversing the tree downwards until we have our, um, so that's what this comment I have here is. Select the next child until we reach an unexpanded node. So that's what we've just done. So now that we have reached an unexpanded node, uh, we're, so it's a leaf node. It's not necessarily a node in which the game is over. But it is, it is currently a leaf node because it has not yet been expanded. So um, we can calculate the value from this leaf state, uh, which we can do using our previous function, we two functions, is win and is board full. So from this state, we want to check. Uh, first, let's check is the board full. Uh, I meant to pass node state here. Um, and this can actually be uh, conditional. So if the board is full, uh, let's return a value of 0, meaning uh, this is a tie. Even though it is possible for a player to win when the board is full, but that, that will be captured by our next conditionals here, is win node state. And is win takes in player as well, if you recall from our first video. So if it's a win for player one, then we are going to give value of one to this uh, to this state of the board. And conversely, if is win for node state, player negative one, we're going to get a value of negative one. Um, and so remember, these just return a true false if the player passed into the function has won the game. That's all we need for those. So, yes, is board full takes a board, and is win takes a board and a player. Okay. So, and we'll also just set the value before we check these conditionals. Uh, we can set the value to none. So, if this does not get overwritten by these conditionals, that means the game is not yet over, or that this uh, we haven't reached a terminal state in the tree. So, if uh, value is none, then the game is not over. Okay, So then from here, we want to, instead of using a value from the game, because there is no value we can calculate from the game yet, no player has won and the game is not over, uh, we actually are going to be left with only the value from the network in this case. And I realize we, we don't have our network initialized yet. We're going to pretend we do using this dummy model function. So we're going to just predict on this state of the board. And we're going to take the value from there. And this actually takes in our action props as well, which we will need to expand that node. So from there, we can node.expand. Uh, this is a function we wrote up in the last video, which takes in our action props. And this will create our children node so that we can traverse the, the tree again. So on our first pass of the tree, we're going to be just basically initializing our uh, each each uh, node of the tree. So we'll start with just these three nodes initialized, and then we will move on to you know either on this left side or on the right side. We'll move on to initializing uh, these other nodes, and, and as soon as we expand and initialize those nodes, then we go back to the top and we do it again, um, and we keep track of all of the the values along the way. So the last thing we need to do is when we need to back up this value. So now if, if the game has ended, or if we've reached a terminal state, we calculate the value from the, from the board, or basically whoever has won is how we calculate the value. And if the game is not over, we just use the value from the model. But either way, we will still uh, back up. Uh, 
Um, so, so for all of the nodes that we touched throughout this simulation, so for example, if for example we went uh, down this route of the tree and all the way down to the bottom, all of these nodes in this search path are going to get a value of positive 1 because we're, we're thinking from the perspective of the blue player, which is our player 1. So we want to increment the value of all these nodes that were touched in this search path by 1. So for, uh, for node in search path, node.value plus uh, value. So if blue had lost in this case, then we would have gotten a, um, a negative 1. Yes. Yes, if, if blue had lost in this case, we would have gotten a negative 1, and that would have been then subtracted from all of the nodes in that chain. Um, and this value is, is important actually for the rest of the simulations as well. It will change the path that the simulations take through the tree, so you can explore different routes if you're not getting uh, positive values. Or if you're not getting desired results, you will start searching different parts of the tree in, in a way of exploring different options. Um, but for now, this is, it's not currently influencing our decision because our select child function is just doing this randomly. So let's run a complete simulation of this. And then let's just print out some information about the, about the board. So we want to see what is the value. Uh, the ultimate question that we're trying to answer here is what is the comparison of values between these first two nodes so that we can make a decision on, in, our, in our larger simulation. So we're running these mini simulations to figure out which uh, board state should we choose in, in, the, in the larger training simulation. Okay, so print node.state um, and actually let's let's start from the root and we can go root children so the left side of the tree we can grab the state and the value And then let's go on the right side of the tree and get the state and the value. And let's just take a look at, at those. Uh, I need to import the random library here. Let's see if I have any more bugs in the code as well. OK, so we have, uh, looks like our values are not getting updated. Let's see if we're ever let's see if we're ever assigning a value to this just just for debugging purposes. And we are. So a very obvious mistake I was making here is that we never actually appended the the next node to the search path, which is obviously an important step. So in this piece. Um, where we were iterating through the search path, we were that was always empty. So uh, here is where, when we select the child node, this is where we can add it to the search path. So basically, we want to just append node to the search path. From there, um, I'll stop debugging print statements. And there we can see, with 100 simulations, we can get, uh, in this simple example, a very obvious choice between which is the better of the two moves. Yeah, so in this case, in searching the right side of the tree, when we were reaching those those terminal nodes, because remember that the network values are not impacting this actually this uh, just yet, because we don't we are just using a fake network for now. So the values are coming from reaching these terminal nodes. We back it up to uh, this here, and ultimately we get more wins for blue on this side and more wins for yellow on this side. Um, this is a very obvious root node here, a very obvious scenario. So even just by randomly choosing or traversing through the tree, we can still come out with the best action. But in more complicated scenarios where there's many different branching and branchings of the tree that could be taken, you can imagine how having a, a good solid network that understands uh, the game of Connect4 to a certain degree can help you, you know, 
at least figure out where in the tree to explore. Um, and then you can accumulate value in those interesting positions that way. So the last thing I want to cover here before we wrap up this part of the series is just this concept of the UCB score um, and swap out this, this random action that we're currently using to select our child uh, before we expand our node. So as we traverse the tree, uh, we need to eventually make a decision of which node we are going to traverse. Uh, and this is done with a function called the UCB score that we glossed over the first time around. Um, but really what this function does is it takes in some prior information about our nodes. Some of it has to do with the value uh, gleaned from the tree searching process, and some of it has to do with the initial prediction from the model, uh, which in our case is a fake model still, but we'll, we'll be able, we'll write it in a way that we can swap in the real model and actually take that into account eventually. So I'm actually just going to paste in this function. It's a very well-known function that you can you know, look into the details of online. So we're not going to cover the, the details of why the math is the way it is. Uh, but this is basically the gist of what we are calculating. Uh, and kind of the inputs, I think, are just what is taken into account here is probably more important to understand. So we're looking at both, to evaluate any state, we're looking at both the parent and the child node. And we also want to um, we want to take into account our prior. This is the prediction from the network. That so the prior being the action probability associated with that state from the parent prediction. And then the parent so dot visits. We haven't covered this yet. I think we'll need to add it here. We can go ahead and do that. This is just the number of times that the node has been selected. Um, we can very easily add this. We can just add it here in our in our search path. So node.visits uh, plus equals one. So every time a node appears in the search path, we will just increment its visits and we'll start it at zero. And then uh, the last thing is we will need uh, just the value associated. So this is the value that comes from either reaching a terminal node, and thus it's the value of winning or losing the game, or this is the value from the, from the network in the case that it hasn't come from a terminal node. So you can see how this kind of nicely takes into consideration both the values in the prior score, and the purpose of this is to balance our exploration versus exploitation trade-off here. So in this Monte Carlo tree searching process, once we find a good solution for one piece of the tree, it's helpful to exploit that good piece of information. So we want to keep taking that good action as long as we're sure about it. Uh, and on the converse of that, we want to still have some aspect of exploration throughout the tree so that if we visit a node many times, for example, uh, in this case, the more we visit a node, the lower the UCB score, and then we will be more inclined to go, to go uh, test out other pieces of the tree. So that when we make our final determination, um, of the, the action we're going to take in our simulation, we have a nice balance there between the exploration and exploitation. Um, so ultimately, we're going to just, instead of selecting a child the way we were before, we're just going to take the maximum UCB score of the child node. So this is very simply, so in this case, self is our parent node. So we can get our score by running uh, UCB score on self and uh, and child. So we'll calculate this for all of the children nodes. Uh, so we can iterate through them. And we can use um, the dot items function on our children dictionary here. So on self dot children dot items. This way we can iterate through both the action and the child. We can calculate the score. Uh, let's set just like an arbitrarily low max score to start. Um, we can just do minus 99. And then if the score is greater than the max score, we can, let's change this to selected action and selected child. 
we'll just keep overriding the selected action and selected child as we discover higher scores. Action selection, selected action, and selected child equals child, and then we can um, assign this max score. So we can overwrite the max score to our current score. So every time we find a higher UCB score, we will just pick that child instead. We can return that. And I think this should then just easily slot in for where we have uh, no dot select child here, and it will use that UCB score calculation to select our action instead. Okay, looks good. So let's see how this impacts uh, the value we get on the first two states of the tree. Looks like we will have to import math here. This is used in the math.square root function. And we have, oh, we have a division by zero error when we, when we check a child that has not been visited yet. Um, because it hasn't been visited, it, it should also not have a value. So we can just make uh, an exception here. If visits is zero, then that means the value should also be zero. So we can just assign that instead. And that way, the only contribution is the prior score. Uh, I intend to do this the other way around. If it visits is greater than zero. OK. And you see now we're visiting our second node much more frequently than, than the left side of the tree. And that's because now that, now that the value is incorporated in that, we click, quickly learn that visiting the left side of this tree results in a lower value and thus lower UCB score. And we, we stopped selecting that action much earlier on. So I think that will wrap up this portion of the series. In the next part, I think we'll finally get into the, the model itself. So we've been using this dummy model predict function for now. Um, and we will actually start building using PyTorch. We'll, we'll build that neural network. It's a, just a large convolutional neural network that will basically predict on this board using that two-headed structure that we mentioned before where it has the policy head and also the value head and we'll explain what the difference between those two things are and how they get incorporated into this tree searching process. Right, so thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.